I got so much to say on Justice League right now. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I didn't know today was Thanksgiving. My mom just told me it's Thanksgiving. That is awesome. Give thanks. Let me read some scripture for you guys. It comes from, it comes from uh, Psalms 35. I know I read verse 3 yesterday, but I'm going to read from verse 3 all the way down to verse 10. All right? It says, Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am your salvation. That sounds like Superman, doesn't it? I know. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. It almost sounds like Steppenwolf right there, being confused and stuff. Let them be as chaff before the wind. Chaff is like ashes, you know. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery. And let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Again, if you think about it, this is fear that they're talking about. For without cause, they have hid me. They hid for me their net in a pit. And if you think Steppenwolf and they were fighting underground in a pit in a uh, nuclear silo. Which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hid catch himself. And Steppenwolf, he tried to bring fear upon the world, and it's fear that consumed him, and literally consumed him, because the parademons were attacking him and eating him. Which reminds me, I never really told people, but you can smell fear. Um, anytime someone is afraid, they emit pheromones, and pheromones are hormones that go into the atmosphere. That's how dogs know if you're afraid animals know if you're afraid and dogs have a really incredibly acute sense of smell and they they sniff at everything so they know if you're afraid of them if you're happy or what and my soul shall be joyful in the lord and it shall rejoice in the salvation all my bones shall say lord who is like you which delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him and if you think about it steppenwolf said to the justice league Y'all are weak. Y'all are not strong enough to know the truth. And then Superman comes up and he says, I know about truth. And I also know about justice. Remember that? And he punched up. So Superman is like the savior there. Yes, the poor and needy. Save them from him that spoils them. And the people in that little Russian tongue, they were like the poor and needy who the Flash and Superman saved, right? All right. Now, all of those things are metaphors for not people who are external enemies, even though this film is going through that right now. They're the detractors of the film seem to be winning, and they seem to be attacking it very successfully. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your internal enemies. Fear, hopelessness, despair, selfishness, greed, hatred. These are the enemies that this scripture is talking about, and they're personified in superhero characters, which represent certain personalities and ideals. And they're also, it's also uh, representing certain, people don't like me to say it, but spirits. And spirits meaning invisible things, values, qualities, which actually influences and can make our world dark. And David was fighting against depression, which is darkness, because depression means hopelessness, despair. And so a nice word for hope which Brent Gulp talked about uh, in his video if you haven't checked out his channel you really should check out his channel he, he has a channel called rise of the heroes and he shows how each one of us can be a hero and he says that hope is really the possibilities of positive things happening or the positive possibilities that's basically hope but when you lose sight of hope you lose sight of positive possibilities happening you're not optimistic for the future anymore. And therefore, you're hopeless. So that's basically it. And this movie, Justice League, it begins in a hopeless situation. Hope seems to be gone. The world seems to not have hope anymore. Even though there are heroes in the background who have hope. And they're hopeful. Even Batman. So, it's very interesting. Now, this movie has so much to say, but I have to stay focused. So I'm going to stay focused on what I have to say to you guys. Um, but suffice it to say that this movie began in a dark place and it moved towards the light. 
and there were some hopeful people in there, but they didn't know exactly. They, they believed there were positive possibilities that could happen. And in the end, hope won out. But suffice it to say that they had to come out of the shadows to do it. All right. Oh, boy. This is so loaded. I don't know what to say. Okay, let's, let's, let's start with uh, the Justice League. So the Justice League, as you can see in front of you here, is devoid of Superman. All right, and let me see if I can find it. So here we are, they're, they're, they're there without Superman. But yet, the spirit of Superman is there. Even though he's absent, and you can see this big space there, notice they're comparing the darkness from the light, and this is what was in this movie. By the way, I know I put spoilers in my title, but this is a spoiler-filled video. So if you haven't seen the movie at this point in time, which is going to be very interesting that you came to my channel, you didn't see the movie yet, but if you haven't seen it, this is spoilers, so be warned. All right, so you see the absence of Superman there. And even in his absence, we have these heroes coming together. Now, what's cool about, the, there's so many themes in this movie, but I just want to explore one of them. Uh, yes, it's going to be here somewhere. Hold on a second. Aha, uh -huh. right. And one of the themes in this movie is unity. Now, you can unite for evil or you can unite for good. So, the nice thing about a Zack Snyder film is Zack always looks at both sides of the equation and he gives you a choice. In this movie, the heroes have a choice in a sort of way. So you can either go uniting in the power of fear and oppression or you can unite in the power of uh, hope, possible possibilities, and to break the chains of oppression to liberate. So. Those are, you know, the United States of America believes in liberty, and that's where it comes from, and it's called the United States of America. They're United States that come together. It's a coalition of people who are looking for a better future. They're hopeful. And so hope is a principle in the United States of America. All right? Um, and so there are all these underlying rivers of themes going on. You know, Superman said, hope is a river, you know, and it flows. And that is very true. Possibilities always flow. There is a river. There's always all these different possible possibilities, positive possibilities. It's not just one possible positive, positive possibility, but there are many. <laughs> so I thought that was really awesome. Now, the thing about this theme, Unite, coming together, is that my, the scripture I just read, if you haven't paid attention to it, is actually alluding to that. But even further... Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder, oh my God, that guy is such a special guy, all right, and I want to show you a couple things about Zack Snyder, but let's keep this theme, remember Unite, okay, and oh, all these comic book, comic book fans Unite, yep, some people talk about DC and Marvel Unite, you know, all of these un un unity things coming together for the greater good uniting all right the justice league is a uniting of heroes well zack snyder in creating justice league the making of justice league he actually did just that and it's so funny that just lines up with josh or joss it's really funny how this whole thing <laughs> all right so Zack Snyder is a DC comic book director. He has directed a ton of DC comic book films. All right? Not only superhero films, but DC comic book films. One of which was Sucker Punch. Joss Whedon was working with Zack Snyder. Joss Whedon is a Marvel director for Marvel superhero films. In fact, Joss Whedon is one of the most successful Marvel superhero film directors, having the highest grossing Marvel superhero films ever. Zack chose Joss Whedon to continue the project of Justice League after him. Listen to me carefully. Unity. Unite. So Justice League is a product of two directors. One's a DC director. One's a Marvel director. Now, now, now check this out. This is where it gets even more interesting. 
The musical director who was brought on to Justice League is Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman has worked in DC comic book films and in Marvel comic book films, bringing the unity between DC and Marvel in this film by doing the musical scores, his musical scores, for both DC films and he even has some musical themes from some of his Marvel films. That This film is a combination. It is a unity of DC and Marvel. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. The theme of this movie is come together. Unite the league. Comic book fans. Come together. Comic book fans, unite. This film is the hope or possibility of DC and Marvel working together one day on a crossover movie and seeing how that would work. It's an experiment. To take the DC tone, overlap it with the Marvel tone to get an extravaganza. It's an experiment. And it started by Zack Snyder. Digest that. Zack Snyder always goes beyond the movie. If you watch that Batman v Superman, they had, and Suicide Squad even, they had these um, uh, social media uh Things. Google Maps actually had Batman's hideout. Uh, they had uh, Lex Luthor's place. On You could go look online and find Lex Luthor's place. Zack Snyder always goes beyond his film. The trailers leading up to Justice League, there was no prequel for Justice League. The trailers leading up to Justice League was telling the story so you would learn bits and pieces about it even before the movie came out. Even though some parts of the trailers never showed up in the movie. To educate you on the background of the correctors. Zack Snyder. The making of this movie was a unity between Marvel and DC. Bringing peace to the comic book area. So that casual fans, whether they're Marvel fans or DC fans, would love this film. It was a peace within the comic book universe. That's why this film must succeed. So, my DC fans... If you want a Zack Snyder cut of this movie, this film must not flop. If it flops, you will not get that cut. You will not get any more DCEU movies because Warner Brothers needs to be fiscally making money. These executives need to be fiscally making money so that they can continue investing in these films. And the highest property they have the pinnacle of DC is Justice League. That movie has to make more than Batman v Superman. That movie must make close to a billion dollars or over a billion dollars. It must. Otherwise, these people will not invest anymore in this property. Zack Snyder's vision is so beautiful. It's like he's led by the Spirit of God almost. I hate to say it like that. But he's a very hopeful, optimistic kind of guy. And you know, there's a character in Justice League that I think is Zack Snyder. I think Zack Snyder's inserted into Justice League. Can you guys guess which character that would be? Let's get into it. So here are the Justice League members. You got Cyborg. You got The Flash. You got Batman. You got Wonder Woman. You got Aquaman. Which one of these characters reminds you of Zack Snyder? Here, let me help you all. And when I saw that, when I came to this actualization... In the movie, I really started to laugh. I cracked up. I cried laughing. I couldn't stop laughing. People were watching me in the cinema. I was cracking up when I realized this character is Zack Snyder. It's Zack Snyder. It's Zack Snyder. This is what Zack Snyder would do. And I was thinking, Zack Snyder, ha you know, every director, they have to come with what they feel the movie should be. And this is a very opinionated film again. Again, a Zack Snyder film. Um, but... Very interestingly, uh, Zack Snyder, here's Zack Snyder right here, and this is the members of the Justice League. This is when they were debuting Batman v Superman, okay? There's Zack, there's Deborah. Look at Zack. Zack Snyder's a guy, he doesn't always finish his sentences. He's like, 
He he does like this. He goes, well, you know, uh, sometimes you know, you you know, take for instance Superman's dad, right? You know, he has to experience his humanity. He's talking to Collider Vidra, right? He has to experience his humanity. So 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 she had to die, you know. And so we had him, you know, we had him die, and we we wanted him. And I argue with Christopher Nolan, you know. And, and you know, uh, 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 you know that's kind of Zack Snyder. He's very hyperactive. He's very lively. He has a lot of energy. Uh, he acts out everything. Uh, he doesn't finish his sentences. Who in the Justice League does that? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's funny? Ezra Miller's Flash. Ezra Miller was actually, he kept on being adamant that this is Zack Snyder's movie. He kept on being adamant about that because he had so many conversations with Zack Snyder. He said, you know, and, and, and I remember Gal Gadot saying, oh, that's exactly how Zack Snyder talks. When Ezra Miller was talking about Zack Snyder calling him on the phone and saying, you know, Ezra Miller, I got this crazy idea about, you know, I would, I, oh, but a character I want you to play in Justice League. You know, I want you to play The Flash. And I'm thinking to myself, that's exactly how Zack Snyder would say it. And I'm laughing. And then I get it. Ezra Miller basically channeled a lot of <laughs> he channeled a lot of Zack Snyder and it's basically the jokes a lot of the, the jokes by the flash that's Zack Snyder's joke that's what Zack Snyder would do and Zack Snyder's a geek he's a real comic book geek he geeks out on everything he geeks out he's always excited he's like ah, look look you gotta go you gotta watch the shot watch it come on. and he will show everybody ah, come on and that's exactly what the flash is when he sees the Batman symbol he's like ah look 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 the Batman and symbol and when he goes into the bat cave the bat cave and I'm thinking that's Zack Snyder on steroids if Zack Snyder had superpowers this is what <laughs> that's what Zack would do <laughs> he'd fanboy out <laughs> and so I was like damn that's Zack Snyder and then the Flash he doesn't finish his sentences he's always very very intellectual he's like mm, not exactly but and I'm thinking to myself dang it this is Zack Snyder! Ezra Miller! And then I, when I was looking at the behind the scenes footage, I saw where Zack tapped Ezra Miller on his hand and Ezra tapped back Zack. And I realized Ezra was kind of channeling off of Zack. And he's feeding off of Zack's energy. Zack's a very energetic director. Ask anybody. He's always very enthusiastic. And that's the Flash. He was always very enthusiastic. In fact, when Batman says, and I'm, 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 I'm forming a team, and, and before Batman could finish, he's like, Stop right there. I'm in. That's Zack! <laughs> <laughs> so I was like cracking up straight through the movie. I'm like, dang it, Zack Snyder's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's, it's, it's hilarious, man. When you guys go back and watch Just Sleep, think about what I just said. And you are really rolling laughter. You, you'll be cracking up. Because that's exactly who the Flash is. It's Zack Snyder. <laughs> I'm not saying Ezra Miller, is, his personality is not that. Absolutely, Ezra Miller is that kind of person. So I could see why Zack had Ezra in mind. Because when Zack wants to bring humor to a film, I mean, Zack has different ways of bringing about humor, okay? If you watch Alex of Gahu. But the Flash is so into things. And Zack is so into things. That it's almost annoying that 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 exactly typifies Zach and Zach's a nerd and and Ezra's a nerd. So it made sense that we were watching at Zach on the screen because Ezra's that kind of personality like Zach. And he would say the things that he's saying and he's high he's high a metabolic rate. He's got high energy. So I'm thinking if Zach had superpowers, he'd probably be the Flash. Also, I just want to say, I just thought it was just really hilarious, so I just wanted to burst. It, it had me cracking up. It had me rolling in the cinema. Man, I couldn't catch my breath. I was laughing so hard, and people were wondering, what's wrong with him? Because I was hysterically laughing. I couldn't control myself. Like uh, Ezra Miller said, he had, an, um, he had a, a, a conniption. <laughs> <laughs> laughing in the cinema when I realized Ezra's basically imitating Zack. 
he's, he's basically channeling off Zach. It was just hilarious, though. It was hilarious. I'm not saying Ezra's not that kind of person as well. Because he is kind of extreme and he likes to, you know, really go into things. But it's just funny that he probably looked at Zach and he was like... And Zach probably knew that Ezra was kind of a personality something like himself. And so it's just really hilarious. Look at Zach right there. 